morning. It is 6 a.m. on Deirdre Fitzpatrick. Man, I'm Teo Torres. So the big headline this morning, it is going to be extremely hot and for the next several days. Yep, let's go ahead and start timing all of this out with Case Area 3 meteorologist Tamara Berg. Yeah, you know, and let me show you one of the influences that's going to start to go away over the coming days because this is what's going to help to lead us into some pretty significant heat, especially timing out for the weekend. Satellite showing off that you can see the marine there, there along the coast. And in the summer months, we like to see a good hardy marine there at the coast with a nice delta breeze on top of it. Now this morning, while there is a delta breeze, that marine there is already showing signs of shrinking down, which is all signals for the heat ahead. Right now, the wind is out of the southwest at 17 in Fairfield. So while Fairfield's basking in the 50s, you'll notice the spread across much of the Central Valley. Most of us are in the 60s as we're not getting as much of a tap of that delta breeze. So it's 65 degrees as the sun's coming up over Modesto. Grab the shades and maybe a long sleeve layer for Stockton at 60 right now. You're down to 60 this morning in Yuba City, 63 in Sacramento. Good morning, Auburn and Placerville waking up in the mother load spots in the upper 60s to low 70s. Here's how the day will unfold for the valley. We'll be in the upper 60s by 9 o'clock this morning on our way to the mid 90s by lunchtime. Daytime high reaching about 100 degrees. Now there are some valley spots that won't get to 100 today, but most of us will be feeling that heat and all of us feeling that heat by the weekend. I'll have more on that significant heat ahead and how long it could last near full forecast. 602 right now. I'll send it over to you. All right, thank you. We appreciate it. And with today's heat is coming a spare the air alert. The air quality is expected to be unhealthy for sensitive groups. So people in this region are asked to limit air pollution by teleworking, taking transit or carpooling. This is our third spare the air day this year. So in theory, Aaron, we should be seeing a little less traffic for the commute. Any sign of that? And I mean, Fridays anyway tend to be pretty light anymore. Yep, uh, not busy on the roads, sorry, but a <laughs> it's not Friday. It's not Holiday. Friday. Unfortunately, it is Thursday, Thursday and it is hectic on the roads uh, in terms of incidents, but it's it's great for spare the air. Let's start with a car fire, which is not great for air quality. Uh, this is in the Lurwick Road area in Sacramento. This sparked about 15 minutes ago. Crews are on their way to the scene trying to deal with why that is. And then we had a car directly into the Sacramento River. No injuries. CHP has removed moved that from our tracking systems, but still kind of odd and they couldn't get the car out of the river. So that is in the Sacramento River right now. Uh, also in the Lathrop Manteca area, this kind of developing and has the potential to really hurt our commuters this morning. This started as a man walking on the side of the road, then another vehicle saying they were run off the road. A wreck ensued. There is an injury. It's kind of a mess. Uh, this on I-5 and 120. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, if we take a look at Tracy, Tracy is cool operating great this morning. Uh, those drive times on your screen right now if you're headed to the bay. Back to you. All right, thank you. All right, now police in Modesto are trying to figure out what led a man to kill his eight year old daughter. It happened last night at a home on Havenhurst Court. Police were initially responding to a report of a suicidal person. But when they got there, they saw 50 year old Donovan Halstead through a window with a gun. They eventually got him on the phone. Halstead told them he would come out unarmed but then suddenly shot his daughter and himself. A child was pronounced dead at the scene. Halston was taken to the hospital. Police say he is not expected to survive. In Citrus Heights, police will release more information today about the arrest of a man wanted for murder. Joshua Zell Brisbane is accused of killing Jason Simmons in March. Simmons' body was found in a home on Sayonara Drive the evening of March 31st. At the time, police said the shooting did not appear to be random. And happening today at the state capitol, there is a deadline and it is looming for tomorrow. Republican lawmakers are going to be trying to force a vote on a child trafficking bill that was surprisingly rejected by a committee. Now the vote has created outrage and more scrutiny on a powerful committee at the capitol. Case Earth is Melanie Wingo's live outside of the capitol building with more on what's expected today. Good morning. Good morning. That child sex trafficking bill passed unanimously through California's state Senate earlier this year. But as you heard, it did not make it through the Assembly Public Safety Committee on Tuesday of this week. So today, the bill's author, Republican Senator Shannon Grove of Bakersfield, says she wants the Assembly to suspend the rules for her bill to bypass the Public Safety Committee so it can be voted on by the full House. 
The bill at stake would classify child sex trafficking as a serious felony under California law, and it would increase prison sentences for repeat child sex traffickers. The Assembly Public Safety Committee, which, as you heard, did not clear the bill this week, is facing intense scrutiny from Democratic state leaders, including Governor Gavin Newsom, and he and others are vowing to address this issue. Deeply about have since my time as mayor, uh, as a supervisor, working with then district attorney Kamala Harris. I appreciate Shannon Grove's efforts on this and, uh, and uh, wanted to make sure she knew that today. And uh, we'll be following up and we'll have more to say about that very shortly. And time is of the essence for all of this, as all of the proposed laws for this year face a deadline of tomorrow to make it out of their policy committees or they will not move forward this year. Reporting live at the state capitol, Melanie Wingo, KCRA 3 News. Now, Senator Shannon Grove had a meeting late yesterday afternoon with the leader of the Assembly Public Safety Committee, Assemblyman Reggie Jones-Sawyer. She said the meeting was productive. Now, KCRA 3 reached out to Assemblymember Jones-Sawyer for comment. We have not heard back yet. Well, happening today, President Biden is wrapping his European trip in Finland. Yes, top, uh, top caps off several days of diplomacy showcasing NATO's unified opposition to Russia. Let's go to Mike Cherry. He's in studio with us now with more on uh, why he's stopping in Helsinki today, Mike. Yeah, so President Biden visiting Finland a few months after the country became NATO's newest member. This right here, this is video from this morning of the meeting between Biden with leaders of Norway, Denmark, Iceland and Sweden. And they're meeting right now. All but Sweden are current members of NATO. But after breaking through Turkey's opposition at the NATO summit earlier this week, that's likely to change soon. The White House is touting the trip as a success, delivering on goals to expand NATO's reach and increase joint defense funding in the face of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. When Putin and his craven lust for land and power unleashed his brutal war on Ukraine, he was betting NATO would break apart. He was betting NATO would break. He thought our unity would shatter at the first testing. He thought Democratic leaders would be weak, but he thought wrong. Now, in addition to joint security, President Biden plans to talk about technology and environmental issues with Nordic leaders before returning home today. Teo. All right, thank you so much. Well, tension rising in Asia after North Korea test fires an intercontinental ballistic missile that landed between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. A North Korea state broadcaster aired footage of the launch last night. Here it is. ICBM was fired just days after North Korea threatened to shoot down U.S. military reconnaissance planes flying over coastal water. Now to Gilolo County, where a man is under arrest after a pretty bizarre robbery attempt. Woodland police say they got a call about somebody who had stolen a motorcycle downtown, then crashed it a few minutes later. About five minutes later, they say a man robbed the nearby Tri-Counties Bank and then tried getting back on the stolen motorcycle. Now, fortunately, community members detained him until the police got there, and you can see that's some of the money that got dropped in all the chaos. Joshua Riddle is now facing charges of robbery, vehicle theft, and hit and run. A San Joaquin County man is going to spend two and a half years in jail over a copper theft that caused internet disruptions for thousands of people. San Joaquin County deputies say Lorenza Ochoa pleaded guilty to cutting copper lines in a campo last May. He disrupted an AT&T service line for people across the county. He got arrested after deputies say they caught him trying to steal more copper wires. As part of the plea deal, Ochoa was sentenced to 32 months in state prison. Well, a Fair Oaks teenager learned a difficult <clears throat> life lesson about the danger of fireworks. Now he's thanking his community for their support getting through a very tough time. His name is Jamie Groshong. He has fond memories of his time playing baseball for Bella Vista High School in Fair Oaks. But now he'll have to focus on living his life without a hand after losing it on the 4th of July. While he didn't go into detail about the accident, he says he wants others to know how quickly life can change. To like really take into consideration what happens, you have to like, your parents are gonna tell you when you leave the door, be safe, be careful, we'll do this, do that. Like, they're caring for you, stuff like this happens. Um, I hope they realize that. Uh, Jamie had hoped to play college baseball, but says he's still trying to figure out where he goes from here. GoFundMe is raising money for him and his family. We will have a link to that on KCRA.com. 
Well, leftover fireworks are still going off. You may hear them periodically. Rio Vista Fire Department is now investigating whether one of those fireworks caused a grass fire. The department recovered these illegal fireworks at Rio Vista High School last night. They say this evidence and video surveillance will lead them to that suspect. They also say if you have any unused fireworks, you can arrange a no questions asked drop off at Fire Station 55. Well, once again, no winners. Now the Powerball lottery is even bigger. Yeah, according to the California lottery side, the jackpot for Saturday's drawing will be 875 million bucks. That is a cash value of nearly 442 million. While no one hit all the numbers last night, some did get some smaller amounts. So here are the winning numbers. 23, 35, 45, 66, 67, and the mega ball number 20. Remember when it was like a two billion yeah. and the guy in Southern California won it? Mm -hmm. uh, he recently bought a $25 million house in the Hollywood Hills. Huh. I was like, boy, life does That's change. That's all? <laughs> That's it. That's all he was? Shooting a little low, aren't wow. you? Yeah.